I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Approve the warrant WRT 409. <laughs> Executive session on May 6, 2023, and minutes from the session July 10th. Motion. 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 Right there, we used to roll. Hey, Joe, we're done. That was on the board. We did a policy. What a new deal, a detail policy. <clears throat> and um, that policy was inclusive of town details. And that, if you will look at the second page on that, in the bottom right hand corner, the total number there, 14 and some change. Yeah. That is what the town of Old Cam paid the fire department members to cover the fireworks uh, on the 4th of July. That's just the fireworks detail money. If you look <clears throat> two pages over, you'll see what got billed. We have a problem. Now, I spoke with the fire chief right after the 4th of July, <clears throat> after I resigned from the board. And his answer to me was that he billed what the fire marshal's office would allow. Well, that's not the truth because the fire marshal, and I checked into it, does not get involved in anything like that. So why he would tell me that I have no idea. But that was not the policy we agreed upon, and that was the very first policy that we did. Now, I realize it's too late to do anything now because the bill's already paid. However, I think particular attention needs to be paid and someone needs to be spoken to. Thank you. Thanks, Brett. <laughs> That said, we invite the uh, fire chief to the next meeting. Yep. We'll get side. Else, see down under 157 Robinson Road. Just uh, from last we uh, last meeting, um, sorry, I wasn't listening at the time, I was two different calls. Apologies, 
Um, just to give clarification for the board in regards to our licensing, I had emailed yourself on Aaron and the rest of the list with me. Who sees you? Um, the reason I chose not to go individual licenses was an overall advantage of things. So this is what I do for a living. Okay. So when you have individual licenses, you have to set up SSO, which is SAML connection, and a skim bridge. Those are two different services which would connect to your Office 365. I know, too technical. My point being is, is that so that your town administrator doesn't have to worry about managing people. You have to add groups, make sure it's managed, and exchange it's just one time thing. But then every time that somebody comes on and off a board, you have to make sure that they're part of it. They're trained on how to record, how to upload, and whatnot, right? Obviously, I'm doing this as a volunteer basis through my company system systems um, at no charge to the town, right? Just to give back. So the reason I chose the room licensing was one, we have an awesome camera with a system that's all integrated, comparative to having these individual licenses where you have to manage a computer. Make sure the camera's connected, make sure the computer's updated, make sure the software's updated, and that everything's working every single time. This don't need to do that. Now, with Aaron, you know, joining us, um, he had requested individual licenses. Obviously, there's a cheaper cost for individual licenses comparative to room licensing, which is more of a you know a broader spectrum, right? Where it's just easy, one touch, push, boom, boom done, right? You want individual license? That's cool, right? I, I just went with a system that we had proposed during when we had talked about it, where it was easier for everybody that isn't tech savvy. I don't, it's telling me to update Windows. It's telling me to update Zoom, and it's six o'clock. I got to start the meeting. But you don't have to do that with this. Yeah. So <clears throat> again, it's different structures for different folks. We're going down a different avenue. I just wanted to make sure it was clear that what I tried to propose was the least cost, least managed, cost effective way to make sure that. Means the recorded were actually able to broadcast something to people live as well as after day one, which is on YouTube, you know, after the fact. Um, obviously, I'm intervening still with that until our bill gets paid and whatnot because it's coming out of this warrant. So, I've been working with Zoom on that. So, again, I just want to make sure it's clear. I'm not trying to defend which way or this position, that position. I just want to make sure it's clear that yes, individual Zoom license, a cheaper. Managing that solution could cost more money down the line. Yeah, compared to this again, just throwing it out there. So, thank you. Um, I think it um, the missing opportunity. I think though is um, getting input from others like the CIC, like other boards, um, and uh, then coming to that consensus. I don't think that happened. I, I think it was um, uh, you as a very helpful volunteer and, and maybe the board, um, but I do think um, uh, it was uh, not inclusive of all of the stakeholders. And um, I think uh, now that we do have another estimate that uh, right now is for 10 licenses that you were able to get that estimate, um, which ends up being cheaper, financially cheaper, um, but also uh, allows for um, more uh, use outside of sitting in this room. Understand. Um, so I think we have to juggle um, the pros and cons of both options. Now that we've been presented with more than one option, I don't think we an option was a second option was presented to the board uh, when it prompted to um, go with it. Well, to respond to that, so when I was on the top table <laughs> internet committee. I did propose going down two different licensing paths. Yeah. The fact is, is that when I looked at not only talking to the cable company about their unwillingness to provide recording equipment, what equipment to purchase to be able to broadcast over it, it was very expensive. Now, working independently with other factors, with YouTubers that do podcasts all the time, comparative to being on the, um, I was invited to several meetings that Don had shared with me in regards to other towns and how they did it. They have a full broadcast, right? So what I was trying to look for was something that was so simplistic. Now, I could have went with the Cisco system desk pros and this and that. I didn't, this was the cheapest thing. Mm -hmm. I found that it was all inclusive. So again, looking at individual licenses, having a secondary computer and management factor. <laughs> 
down the line and being in collaboration. Yeah, that my opinion, right? And obviously I was the chair of that committee at the time. And I, you know, I said that I looked at the <laughs> options and this is what we had, right? And I felt that this was a cost-effective solution compared to one, people broadcast, two, individual licenses, three, room licensing. Um, I, I think uh, we, we're just paying the two room uh, license fees for the year now. Yes, um, I think we had some time to decide if we want to look at an option to have one um, uh, license that allows it to be used outside of this building. Because right now, um, our only option, as I understand it, is to be in this room or potentially another room. Um, so I, I think um, at least having one other license, but as you've said, um, with the with the name of the license and you, you know what board is it going to be? Just to show you, you see this. I log into that thing remotely. So so it could be yes, outside because yes. that was one of the questions I asked. So if the board of health wasn't in this you building. Can, you log into that. You remote. still can log. I need an individual like we only have one individual license, which was going to be used for the town, right? And so if somebody had to manage that. And this is what I was saying, right? Like I can invite people. everything that's on my board, you can log into it. So that's saying yeah, it can it can be done. Oh god, yeah. So I think we need to look at that how it could be done not in this building. Yeah, so like course. if we had an annual town meeting, but this so could that we was, set this up. So that's the that's why I had the second room yeah. so that we could bring I was gonna help set that up to make sure that next meeting goes well and bring it over there. Mm -hmm. That was my whole plan. So we can do this from the end. Of course. Yeah, that was the whole point. Yeah, I thought we were going to put it in that wall. Yeah. In there. Oh, not, not a wall. I have another cart. You just break it down, bring it, boom, done. Which I, I help them with. Nice that we can go. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And this is how many? Was it 500? Um, users on this particular account? Yes. I think I saw that on the. Yeah, uh, but we had, how many we have less than 300 physically in person? Yeah. I mean, virtually I don't think we have over 500. <laughs> it's a lot. But then again, you also need to come up with that policy in regards to at the annual town meeting, you allow remote participation compared to the person. Hopefully. I believe you're correct. So, I didn't see when I looked at all the other time meetings, just to, to only during COVID, there Correct. was an exception. But I think even if you can't vote to have that recording of it, I think well, it's really important. Well, oh, thank you very much. Special state election. Except for November twenty twenty three from seven AM to eight PM. <laughs> Vote in special state election for the candidates for the following offices Senator in the General Court for the Worcester and Hampshire District. Motion. I would move we um, approve the warrant for the special state election on November 7, 2023, <laughs> from 7A to 8P. Second, all in favor? Aye. Aye.
Well, I good. Thank you, Ms. Chair. Appreciate it. Does what means us okay? Yeah, that's fine. All right. Excuse me. <laughs> Um, no, I appreciate it. Um, Aaron had asked if I would come to a meeting, and I was very happy to do that. Um, in my new role as uh, director of rural affairs, part of what the job entails is that there are 181 rural communities in Massachusetts. And the way that they define rural, if you don't mind, um, just to, because there are different definitions, but it's a community under 7,000 people or less than 500 people per square mile. Using that definition, there's 181 communities that meet that out of the 351. So uh, it's over almost 60% of, uh, of the population, so to speak. Um, however, uh, actually about 60% of the land mass, about 15% of the population in those 181 communities. Most of them are out west, but there's a lot up in uh, the northern Essex County, um, down by the Cape, Martha's, areas of Martha's Vineyard, Nantucket, those are rural communities as well, including the town of Gosnell in Mathis Vineyard with 30 people in Gosnell. And so part of my job is to go to all those 181 communities uh, to reach out and try to help with economic development. I'm under the economic development secretary. Uh, secretary Ron Howe is the secretary for economic development. I don't know if you've got an opportunity. You've met with her? No, no. Oh, but you know, is, yeah. um, very nice. She's very nice. And part of uh, with the Hilly Driscoll administration, you know, they made a promise not to forget the rural communities. And I think that, as you know, in the time that I had been in the Senate, that we get forgotten, there's no question. And so part of my job to um, not just to be really a cheerleader, but to really show that, you know, the urban areas need us, you know, and I think sometimes that that gets forgotten. You know, you think about uh, the food that we provide, the water we provide. The air, the clean air we provide, the open space, and on and on and on. And uh, so it's time that that Boston and some of the eastern areas remember that. And um, so what I'm doing is getting around to meet with people. I've started uh, with the 181 town administrators, um, town managers, uh, so members of the select board, that every week I do kind of a, a weekly call in. and. and Aaron's been good enough to get on those calls, just kind of giving an update on what's happening on the state and federal level. And so one of the big things that's happening now is that on the federal level, there's a lot of money coming in. Uh, there's about $17 billion that the feds are putting out, a lot for transportation projects and other type of projects. So Massachusetts, you know, we, we want to get our hands on some of that. So it's 17, excuse me, 17 billion with a B, 17 billion. And so what the governor has done is that we have a rainy day fund and she's using the interest of that rainy day fund to be able to leverage the, those dollars and working with the towns because a lot of times what I've been hearing and what I've heard in the past is that towns will say, wow, I'd like to apply for that grant, but there's a match. There's a $20,000 match. We can't even come up with the match. So the idea about using that money is so that towns can do that. Well, we have to use that money to the matches that they need. And, and the way that it works out, if we're able to leverage a couple billion dollars from the state to have access to up to $17 billion from the feds, that's a pretty good deal. And so uh, every once a month, and I think, Aaron, were you on that call with the feds on the yeah. state? Okay, so the uh, Quentin Palfrey uh, was appointed by the governor to be kind of a conduit to the feds. And so once a month, they get on a call with town officials. And if you don't have that, I, will, I can get you the information so you can log on to those calls. And they talk about what grants are coming up and what you might be able to apply for and what the state can help you apply for. So that's something that has not been done before. We've left money on the table, if you will, and the governor made the promise that we don't wanna do that. We're going to go after every federal dollar that we can. 
um, because you know when you think about it, right? It's our money anyway, right? <clears throat> so uh, we might as well try to try to get some of it coming back. On the state level, the one grant that I will be very involved in is the Rural and Small Town Development Fund, and that's under what's called the Community One Stop Program. And I know that O'Kane in the past has applied for, and I believe you've done pretty well in the past. But now though, I can't remember the last one that you. Not on okay. Um, so the, those are monies that are available as well that that OCAM can apply for, and um, you know we'll we'll help you through that process if there's something that you're looking at now uh, to to kind of get into that grant cycle because that's going to be coming up. You have an opportunity. What my office will be doing is that um, you can do like a statement of interest. So if there's something that you're interested in, there's about 13 programs under the community one stop, and it, it's a pretty user friendly program you know when you're talking about things that are easy to do right <laughs> so um it's a pretty easy program you can kind of put in what you're looking for so let's say it was um, a sidewalk repair Kevin right if it needs some for sidewalks about that you could plug that in and it would immediately tell you which grants you could apply for and you can do the statement of interest ahead of time get that information into my office we'll take a look at it Make sure that you're on the right track. And past experience has shown that about 75, 80%, you don't have to do that statement of interest, but by doing it, about 80% of the people who have done that end up actually getting the, the grant because it just helps you. And it's, so you're not going down the wrong pathway because we know a lot of the smaller towns, you don't have grant writers. And it's really difficult. You know, it's the department heads, you know, the, the chief or whoever that has to, right, has to write those grants. And they're not easy, some of them. Um, this is a pretty easy process. And I don't know, have you done the mass works before, Kevin? Three, yeah. We've done 2.4 million. Yeah, so you've done pretty well in mass works. So, yeah, that's good. But that's, you know, that's a, uh, that, that's because of you. You know, that's because of the work that Kevin has done and the town has put in because it takes a lot of work to do that. So hats off to Kevin for getting that, that money coming in. Um, so those are the kind of things that, that I'm going to be working on and will continue to work on, but I'm happy there's anybody... Paula, you must have something to ask Jim. <laughs> I, I, I know Paul does. No, I, I, I'm sorry, Mr. Chair. I shouldn't have. Sorry. Paul Rochette from Gaffney Road. One of the things I think that would really help all the rural communities if the state would exempt the small communities from the prevailing wage. The small towns that we can't afford to, you know, have contracted roofs put on. It probably costs us a million dollars to roof this building, okay? The church right next door would only pay about a third of that to do their building because they're, they're private. Yeah. And it's the same people, you know? Yeah. So all the little communities are getting beat up by this prevailing wage law. And I understand why, why it's there. It's, it's to make it competitive so that the unionized shops can compete against the independent contractors. But the union and I shops don't even want to come into rural communities because the project's not big enough. And what happens is the towns can't afford to go forward anyway, so it doesn't even get done. And the small, you know, independents don't get the work either. So it hurts everybody all the way around. That, that's one thing I've been going after for years now, and I can never get an answer back on it. So I'm glad you brought it up. The, um, the, the, lieutenant, the lieutenant governor has done seven statewide hearings. Uh, and it, it, they concluded on Friday. On Thursday, we were in West Boylston. And in all of those seven hearings, I was at six of the seven that came up at every single hearing, excuse me, every single meeting, that someone said, uh, we need to do something about prevailing wage. At least maybe to, to, to change the cap to do something for rural communities. So she heard that loud and clear. There's going to be kind of a, a municipal um, bill of some sort coming out. If you remember, probably about 10 years ago, there had been a municipal bill that had come out, had done some major changes on things um, um, and some minor changes, like you know, allow, allowing towns, if you wanted to set your own speed limit for 25 miles an hour, you could do that without having going through a big legislative um, brouhaha. So she's, there's something that's going to happen. I don't know what it will be, but I can tell you that she heard that loud and clear. That came up at every single one of our meetings. The other one that came up at every single meeting was about a new, having something for municipal buildings. Uh, we know that, you know, with the school building assistance fund and looking to do something for municipal buildings because of 351 cities and towns, 351 need something. 
either another police station, a highway, um, some sort of public safety complex, whatever it is, or work at a town hall or a library, whatever it might be. And so she heard that loud and clear as well. So I do think probably you're going to see something. I can't promise you what it will be, but she's heard it loud and clear, especially to do something for our rural communities. And I and the other thing that I'm trying to work on, and Kevin will be happy about this, is to try to make some chap changes to chapter nine, which funds the roads and bridges. The current formula really does not help rural communities because they don't count road mileage enough. And so if we just did, just to give you an example, if we just did road mileage and population, just use that, that would benefit about 144 rural communities and give them almost a 60% boost in their chapter nine. Big money. And that, that's, that's going with maybe a $25 million extra into the pot. So when you think about that, the amount that it, it because what, what happens in a small town, um, you know, you have to, you, you have to do it, right? You have to kind of like bank your chapter nine in order to do a project because it costs so much. And, and to your point, Paul, things are more expensive out of way because you're absolutely right. People don't want to come, we, it, you know, in some of the housing stuff, a developer doesn't want to come in to build three units. They want to build 300. And so everything becomes more expensive because uh, of the scale. You know, you just can't do things. So there are a number of issues. That I, I believe me, I have a laundry list of things that, that I want to get done to really help our rural communities. Right? And I'll stay at it. So, yes, sir. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. School budgets. And yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what I want to speak about. Yeah. yeah. I'm Alan Flight. Yeah. Nice to meet you. I am. I'm at Nine Grace Lane in Oakland, and I'm chairman of the finance committee. Yeah. So I've been on the finance committee for six years. Uh, Paul, who you've known for many years, uh, stepped down half of us, I took over to chairman. Yeah. In the six years I've been on the committee, the single biggest challenge has been the education budget. Mm -hmm. Last year, they came to us with an initial proposal to increase the education budget by 17%. And they, we blamed the vast majority on that requirements and mandates from Boston. And that's kind of how it was put in the game. They dropped it down to 7% at the end. So the town had 1% increase in the town budget and a 7% increase in the school budget. We can't continue to do that. Um, every year I've been on it again, Paul spent four years, five years with, with me, and we learned a lot about the education budget. Every year, it's been much more than what the town increases almost every year more than two and a half percent increase would quote budgeted for and if this continues you can see a lot of small towns like opium have true financing problems bankruptcy issues not next year not the year after no. it's building and you cannot continue to have the state house of whoever's pushing the requirements on the regional school system we're part of to expect us to buy them pay for those funds we start sacrificing police highway uh, because they have the ability, and I know you know this, but they have the ability to basically tell us that they don't accept our recommended budget and we have to accept theirs. And that puts you in a no-win situation where we could be literally forced to reduce a budget for very needy municipal services. So I hope you make that a high priority for what you're working on. Yeah, and, and before I, you know, came into to this, I, I it, I don't work on that issue on a day in day out basis. Okay, I don't. So I don't want you to think that, that I am. Um, before I came to this position though, uh, I was one of the co-chairs for the Regional Sports, yeah, yeah. Sports Caucus. And so obviously, you know, we know that that's an issue. We know that in our rural communities because of declining populations, that, that it's a problem. Um, you know, you look at the state of Massachusetts like I mentioned, 351 cities and towns. We have 378 school districts. We have more school districts than towns. You go to a state like Maryland that's about the same size as Massachusetts. They have 13 schools. They, they also have county level, so it's a little bit different. But things are very different in other areas of the country on how they do things with their school budgets. You know, we do things based on property tax. It's, it's, it's a tough issue, right? And, uh, you know, in the smaller towns, it, it's very difficult. 
There's no question. Oh, it, you it, know, it, and two and a half, as you know, is a third rail. Right? Oh, it definitely is. You know, um, you know, there's been some talk about trying to do something with the the minimum local contribution on that little tick up that happens. You know, to do something to, you know, there's been talk about trying to exempt communities from two and a half, like just that little tick up every year, and and how that might help the community. Um, because you don't want to pick the school districts because everybody here went through school. You have kids and you have grandkids. And education is important. Um, you know, police and fire. So you don't need to, you don't need to pit services against each other. But every year. Yeah. It is I get, the number one issue. That. That's yeah, what I'm saying. Yeah, Anything yeah, you can do to help in that area yeah. is appreciated. Yeah. I think one one of the things too, and I know that regionalization is not always the answer because regionalization sometimes doesn't say right. Um, but there there may be ways to uh, share different type of services in other areas, and if you're doing that, you're saving money in other areas of your budget. But again, you're saying that we should save money on the town budget to spend more on the school. Well, budget. I'm not necessarily and spending. That's what you well. <laughs> well, I don't think I said, no, I don't, I didn't okay, say it. Like I didn't say it. I said that there are ways to do things to maybe save money and, and to preserve services because we're not going to change, you're not going to change the formula overnight. It's not going to happen. And um, so you have to kind of be creative, unfortunately. Uh, one of the things that, you know, the, we, we tried to, um, you know, at least boost up the regional school transportation reimbursement. Which was I know it's supposed to, yeah. right? So it's up to a little over 90%, I believe, this year. I know it's supposed to be 100%, you know, and that's picked up every year. Um, making sure that um, circuit breaker for students who are in special education, that that gets fully funded, that helps. So there, there are things that can be done to help on the school side of the budget. That investments, those investments on the state side can be made. Yes. Um, Steve Downer, 157 Robinson Road, also on the finance committee. Yeah. Um, you, I've written the Quabbin Regional that you were assessing what happened in the Quabbin many years ago, which was the flooding, which caused the reservoir. Has your uh, committee looked at like the proportion, like this small business and everything else that was kind of taken away from this area? And what? 50 years ago or something. 70, like, 70, 70, 70 years ago. 70 years ago. Sorry. But I was just wondering if there was, a, I, there was an article that I read at EB Flats wrote, and I was just wondering if anything's come out. So I'm not quite sure I get the question. So like in the assessment of, so there was, oh, you, we lost all, a oh, whole town. Okay. Yeah. So I, I, I so the, the towns, um, the, the properties that were lost when Dana and Phil Grinch and Prescott were, were yes, out, yeah. in those communities. So the MWRA, gives a payment every year. And so there is a payment that is given to those communities. Now, um, the communities within the watershed are saying, hey, look at water really is an expensive commodity. Correct. You can't do anything without water. So maybe is it time to reassess that? So there is a bill within the legislature right now. Senator Joe Comerford, uh, she's from uh, Northampton and mm -hmm. represents a lot of the communities. Uh, she has filed a bill to take a look at maybe it's time to put a different value on what the water's worth. Is that what you're? Yes, that's correct. Right, because I know that they're looking at Rutland State Park as well yeah. in regards to more water, right? And like yeah. how much more are we going to give yeah. so we get some of that? And that was just the yeah. only question. Appreciate your answer. Yeah. Alan just mentioned percentages, but let, yeah. me, let me just break it down a little bit more. Yes. For you. This town can raise $85,000 on the Prop 2 and a half. School alone came in last year with 205,000. Mm -hmm. Now, mathematically, you know, right, that doesn't work. right? And that's what he's getting. Right. At. We yeah. cut services, yeah. it was what you mean. There's only one thing to do is cut, and we can't. You know, it's 1,900 people here depending on the services. Yeah, and he can help us have understand that. Yeah, I think, it, as I mentioned, you know, I, I and then legislature anymore. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I understand those, <laughs> those, those budgets. But you know, part of it with the new student opportunity act, the idea is that over a period of time that it should help some of the smaller communities. But the other part of it too, as you also probably are aware, um, when I was in the legislature, we had started to do some rural aid. 
uh, and so that OCAM did receive some funds from that. That started out when uh, when I was first in the Senate at three million dollars. It's up it's up to fifteen million dollars this year, um, and according to the auditor's report, that should be about fifty five million dollar plot of money in order to really make smaller communities whole. So there are things that are being done. I know they're not being done quickly, but the, you know, there's an acknowledgement because you're right, Alan. I mean, it, it's not just it's not just here. You know, yeah, I no, it's, 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 to, it's hardware. We understand that. Yeah, it, 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 it's every, it's every, it's, it's yeah. It's no, it's not. the same place, and yeah. nothing addresses it. Yeah. A lot of rural communities are have serious yeah. problems yeah. three, five, and ten years down the road. I mean, it just it's building. Right. And um, yes, you, um, <clears throat> I think you mentioned a couple weeks ago that uh, your office might be hiring a grant someone Correct. because we have so little money to, we don't even have town administrator, which you know, yeah. um, how are we supposed to go out and look for grants that might help a small town like us without having that resource? Yeah. So the, um, so a couple of things. Um, the Central Mass Regional Planning Commission has extra money to to do technical assistance to help out. So that is one group that will also help. And there is someone coming in. I'm in, I'm in office of one, by the way. <laughs> um, um, but I am having someone come in that is going to focus strictly on the rural small town development grants and basically to help the community to shepherd them but to also follow that if they're given the award to follow that contract all the way through to help out because we know that people don't have the capacity. Um, there's not enough people to do it. So yes. Um, and a, a, a person has been offered that position. I don't know if they'll accept it, but there has been a person that is offered and hoping to have that person on board by November 20th. And I'll just make an unrelated point yeah. that the legislature pushed through a bill um, overnight, not following any of the standard processes, the gun bill. Mm -hmm. um, but yet, for how many years have they been trying to address this school funding? Right. Um, so they can do it when they want, um, but they've got the people um, east of 495 uh, pushing for them. And I think uh, we really need people, um, rural communities Absolutely. pushing for us. Absolutely. And I just I just want to make a comment, okay? In Ann's former role as senator, I know she was frequently in communications with the superintendent of schools up at Parliament. And I know her office worked tirelessly trying to help all of us. So I just don't want to be sure everybody appreciates all the work that I know you had done in the past for us. Thank you. Thank you. And um, I think you, Ann. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Now we get to this on the day. Now we get to this on the day. Now we get to so then you're looking at, I would say, till then, but that's also getting it all in, giving it to council. So that's a lot of time. It would only be two weeks, which is. I would do, I mean, if you do two weeks from now, you're bringing it down to the 13th. So it doesn't. It's a lot of turnaround time for council. I would, I mean, board can do whatever they want but to be have a little extra time to be probably shortened. Because it has to be posted on the 20th. It has to be 14 days. It's not business days, thank goodness. It's 14 days.
we hit gets opened, let's say officially tomorrow. One week from that would be the seventh. Election day. Two weeks would be the I mean, we seventh of the yet. So it's the fourth case. Okay. Like yeah. I mean, I think it's awkward to fight no matter what. <laughs> now we got to have to to review the. You've got to you know, figure out the language on the article. Yeah, you can push it back. And still it's only do the one week, I would say, just because, you know, with town council, the back and forth, and even still work until that day. Now, if we move to the 11th, that is a natural day. <laughs> <clears throat> Open the thirty first and close the seventh. I mean, does it matter if we're closing it when we're not even going to be having the meeting until the thirteenth, unless we be scheduling a meeting to? No, I I mean I think in past it doesn't matter for the net that point. Well. When, when is the selectmen's meeting? Because then you guys would have to approve them anyways. Right. So couldn't we get people until the. Yeah. Then you meet on the 31st of the time. And are you a member of the date on the. I would move that we end the date of the special town meeting to December 11th, that we open the warrant on the 31st and close it on the 10th of November. Next up, we have Elder Services and COA for a completed memorandum of understanding. Hi, good evening. My name is Jim Burns, the uh, program manager of the Meals on Wheels nutrition program. This is Sue Denisha, she's the area manager. Hi, how are you? Uh, and we've been asked to come to this meeting. Um, and um, I guess just to have a discussion about the, the meals program and whether or not there are any uh, concerns or we also sent a copy of the memorandum of understanding um, and if anybody has any questions relative to that, uh, we can answer it. And Sue has brought a lot of uh, information like, uh, about the program. program from money uh, management to Meals on Wheels, protective service. This is what every um, consumer gets once they they get something from us. They get a packet like this. Um, here are the Meals on Wheels and congregate numbers for the year. And here is um, our yearly book booklet. Uh, Mr. McGovern uh, did a Meals on Wheels route in March in Oak Camp, and he went to every single home, and he was delighted. Every single person um, put an ask him up, and here's a picture of Ralph Mann. I have a book for everybody for Mr. McGovern. And also there is a 10-minute video that I sent to Maribel that um, talks about OCAM for 10 minutes on the state floor and how much everybody Actually, appreciates it, Jan and Meals on Wheels. It was on the, uh, it was on the DC floor. It was on the house floor in Washington. So, yeah. 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 
Um, that book is our annual report that we gave out at the annual meeting last uh, last week. My first job as a social worker was at other services in Whistler. Oh, how nice. Kathy Hudson was my supervisor. Wow. She is still there. <laughs> awesome. So, in your name, sir? Aaron Langways. Aaron, okay. I'll tell Kathy. Uh, 2000. In the year 2000? Okay. Very good. I think the only thing that I wanted to make sure is that we have a very active and new Council on Aging, and I think it's really important that there be a strong collaborative relationship between the chair of the Council on Aging uh, and the, um, the meal program. And are you the chair of the Council yes, on Aging? I'm Barbara Rashinsky. I'm the new chair of the Council on Aging. Hi, Barbara. Pleased to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. I know Susan. Um, you know, I've been in this job almost six years, and um, we really do our best to collaborate with every city and town that we work with. And um, I was talking to Sue about it last week. We need to get back to our annual visits to all of our towns. Uh, you know, we used to do it, you know, pre-COVID. And um, so I think we'd like to get back to that now. And um, so I don't know if we want to set something up. You know. I'd like to give a statement first, if I can. Sure. Because we've had some uh, issues. First of all, I'd like to as from the Council on Aging to express our sincere appreciation for the work of the elder services, preparing, assembling, and delivering, is it 26 meals out of this facility? Um, to Oakham, Braintree, Hardwick, to homebound residents is a valuable and necessary resource. And we really thank you for it. <laughs> However, we do have concerns. By agreement, we're to provide a room or hall four days a week, and for us, it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, between 9 a.m. and 1 p.m. suitable for senior dining and program activities before and after mealtime. We're to provide adequate locked storage and uh, provide a means for trash removal. Often, um, we have a dumpster that we're allowed to use out back, but often, um, and I don't know if that comes back to the Council on Aging, but we see trash bags left and we know that meal site participants will often be either taking them home or taking them to the trash or whatever. I don't know how that works. We've been doing the best we can with all of that. But in order to conduct our own senior activities during those times, we have for the past year brought in our own coffee maker, electric tea kettle, um, a, an apartment sized refrigerator, and until last month, water, because we're not allowed to get water from the kitchen. We have purchased or have donated our own supplies and we do not go into the kitchen. We have not for about a year. We have at the least not been welcomed by the site manager. We have been verbally criticized for our choice of activities been reprimanded for the use of equipment like air conditioners. <clears throat> We've been told that decorations, tablecloths, et cetera, that are stored in what we were told was our Council on Aging office belong to elder services and we are not to touch them. We are told not to go into the kitchen or dining area, even to decorate to, because those areas belong to elder services and or the site manager. We've had padlocks put on closets, not in the dining area in our seated area and without warning or explanation. If the things that we're talking about in fact belong to elder services or the site manager, we respectfully request that they be moved to the elder services areas and clearly labeled or just removed if they are personal items. As the COA, we have cleaned, organized and repaired areas of the senior center that had hanging wires, closets stuffed with elder services decorations in storage uh, tubs. Um, we have cleaned up or repaired unsecured boards and filth. Last week when I received the elder services agreement, I was told that the kitchen would no longer be locked. I came up as usually at, as I do at 1 p.m. on Thursday to set up for our Friday activity. 
and the kitchen was again locked. My husband and I cleaned and moved the stacked chairs, repaired again hanging boards, cleaned debris, and moved the tables in the dining area to provide access, easier access, and more comfortable communication between guests in the dining area. We had a speaker um, maybe three weeks ago at the lawn table. We chose to stay in the dining area for our speaker. Seniors at the end of the long table could not always adequately hear the speaker. Anyone sitting on the back side of the table had to remain seated during the whole process, could not get a drink of water, could not go to the bathroom unless everyone behind the table got up and moved to allow them to leave, which interrupted the program to say the least. Um, <clears throat> on Friday, we hosted 10 seniors for a pizza bingo activity and they all enjoyed time together with delivered, delivered pizzas. All of our lunch and learns have had either potluck that we brought in, we provided crock pots or whatever. We do not use the kitchen. We have tried not to aggravate or frustrate the site manager and we have remained self-sufficient. On Saturday at a public event, <clears throat> one of us was asked, when are we gonna put the tables back where they belong? I, uh, I came up early on Sunday morning and all the tables were still the way we had set them for our activity. I took some things home to repair. When I came back by one o'clock, all the tables had been removed, replaced where they had been and our things were placed in the middle of the sitting area, just left. Now, unfortunately today, there was an interaction with one of our senior board members and it was anger over this, this silly situation from the weekend. And that member has since resigned from the board. It should be noted that when the kitchen is locked with the screens, Access to the electrical panel, either circuit breakers or fuses, is unavailable to anyone using the downstairs. So if there is an electrical problem, we cannot access it. Also, the phone in the kitchen for meal reservation receives not only your meal reservations, which is fine, but Council on Aging calls and messages that are then to be passed on the Council on Aging needs our own phone line and you need your own phone line for meal reservations. And we need a means for private message retrieval. Many of the things that come in are confidential. So I have some questions to consider. Does elder services or their representatives have the right to tell the Council on Aging how to use their senior citizen space? what things actually belong to elder services that we should not be using? Is there any responsibility on the part of the site manager to provide a friendly, welcoming environment? Personally, I come in to put out our new sign early in the morning and I'll usually greet good morning or hello. And it's either ignored, apparently unheard or begrudgingly responded to, and I'm not alone. In light of our recent pandemic, are there specific guidelines for site and meal managers for masks, updated vaccines, um, cleanliness of the tables where people sit and floor? And I have the old agreement, so I know that's 12 years old and I see the new one as a So a lot has changed in 12 years. As chairperson, I feel discouraged through their efforts in trying to rejuvenate and reorganize the OPM Senior Center have been met with such negativity. Many of us have visited other local senior centers. We've never <coughs> seen a locked kitchen, and all of them serve congregate meals and prepare meals on wheels. We've seen their facilities and their equipment. By comparison, we have been told, don't touch, don't do that, and have been restricted from full use of the facility. We have had computers and printers and furnishings removed without warning, we bring in our own personal computers and equipment for activities. We're working hard for the seniors of OCAM and are pleased with the positive responses that we receive from those we serve. 
This behavior of sarcasm, sarcasm and negativity has to stop. Enough is enough. But we thank you for your willingness to create a more positive collaboration between Elder Services and the OPM COA. Okay, I'm going to acknowledge a couple of those things. First, I'm going to the locked gate. And every, I was the site manager in 208. I also worked at the library for eight years. That gate was there when I was a site manager in 208. And I'm also going to address that you have a key, Barbara, to that. And, and I don't. Okay. Well, somebody in the COA does. And, and I, I, all those closets, we discussed that. They're yours. I told you. The only closet we have is a closet right, right next to the, the kitchen. kitchen that none of that stuff was ours. It was Lucy's stuff. I, I discussed all this with you. And then you didn't why, bring any why of the padlocks? Like why are the padlocks new in the last couple months? I'd, how do I know? We I don't, don't know, know either. You need to ask your site manager. Yeah. I'm sorry, we need, you need to ask your site manager. You didn't put them on there. They were on there. No. no. I'm Janice Handerhand, yeah. <clears throat> Vice Chair, Council on Aging. The locks that are there now are different than the ones that were there before. <laughs> They've been changed. Well, I'll figure that out. So, but we, did Lucy change them? Lucy we have no idea. We don't know. Okay. Well, this happens when comes on aging is that was never brought up to me. And again, I all I, this stuff wasn't brought up to me till two months ago. And I started addressing it. I addressed it immediately. Mm -hmm. We are not saying that you didn't address it. I'm happy for your coordination, Susan. I really am. However, when you're dealing day to day with negative remarks, sarcasm, not so, being addressed. I, I, I have seen Melanie, I've seen Janice walk through, say, hi, how are you? What are you doing? And have the head turn and no response be given. That can only go on for so long. And it's been over a year that we have been walking on eggshells, not to aggravate, not to cause a problem for, for elder services because we realize how important it is. So we have tried, been, that's why we are self-sufficient because so as not to bother the kitchen and the dining area, we have brought in all the things that we find necessary to use while elder services is doing what they need to do. Here's what, I, here's what, I, what I'd like to propose. I think that you know, clearly there are some issues that we, we, we would like to discuss, and I would like to take those offline in a meeting. So I don't really think it does anybody any good to, you know, to, talk about people in public forum that, um, so I think that's better served if we have, if we, if we set up a meeting to do that. Mm -hmm. um, as far as some of the other things that, um, that you were talked about, um, there are no COVID protocols any longer. Okay. So masks, you know, we are a mask friendly agency. So mm -hmm. if folks, you know, decide that they want to, you know, wear a mask, then all, all well and good. But um, in terms of um, any kind of protocols for us, um, those are gone at this point. Okay. And I will address the key situation. Melanie has had a key. And until we realized about the locked access to the electrical panel, we haven't been using the kitchen. We haven't seen any need to even use the kitchen. We don't have a lock, so, we don't have a lock to the electrical panel. Yes, you do. That's where the screen is in the kitchen. Oh, the well, the okay. Yeah. So we are now devising a manner to keep the key on site. The other day, Melanie is not here. Melanie has eight hours a week. She can't be here every day. We had an issue where we wanted to get to the electrical panel. The Board of Selectmen does not have a key upstairs to the locked kitchen. We had no access to it. If there were an emergency, we would have a problem. So we are devising downstairs a way to keep that key on site. Does so it need to be locked trying at all? To address. There's nothing in this agreement that says it needs to be locked. It just needs to be available. Uh, we have a tiny bit of equipment in there, uh, but she can. She's been locking her paperwork in the closet. 
Uh, again, we didn't. Uh, that was all there in 2008 when I worked there. But we could stop it now. It's up to you. I mean, it's it's not in the agreement, so. And again, we uh, we didn't put it there. I think it. My my initial point was I think more communication collaboration with the new council on aging is important, and clearly it's been lacking. Not necessarily anybody's fault, but. Uh, it's a new opportunity going well, forward. It um, it really hasn't been a concern, Aaron. Um, it is new leadership. It, I understand. There was old leadership. This is something that Sue has been attempting to address with Barbara ongoing. Um, and so, you know, to be truthful, I was a little, little taken back that I'm coming to this forum to talk about this because I think this could be ironed out, um, you know, in a, in an informal meeting with um, all, all parties concerned. So I don't, did you never got a copy of this, right? No, I do now. So I, I gave her a copy at the beginning of the I meeting. had the old one. But I gave you the new one when they got the same day. I think that I gave it to you. No, oh, you I gave me the old one. I got the new one. You got the I, yeah, I, I somehow I, I gave you the new one, and Maribel went down and got it from you. So you I, saw it, and then I sent it to your phone 10 days ago. I have what I got on my phone was the old one. That's the PDF that I got on my phone. I just showed it to Aaron tonight. Yeah. So it's the Council on Aging that signs it's not the board of science. Yes. Um, I'm Sandy Roshinsky. Um, I'm just a volunteer for the COA. I, well, anyway, my concern is that um, I think Jan's done a wonderful job. I'm not saying she hasn't, but she has charge of the kitchen, not of the dining area at any other time. Who has, I think the question has to come up, who has the right to use that dining room? She says we can't. Only okay. when the agreement. Except agreement. the nine to one, Monday through Thursday. Right. That's fine. But any other time, we can't put decorations out there. We can't change. She's telling us no is what I'm saying. Well, and I think that's what you need to meet. That's what we need to meet on. I think part of the difficulty is, yes, we hear you, but on site, we are told something different, and that's difficult because you don't want arguments in the middle of the senior center where people are attending, et cetera. No, we right. are trying to make it as pleasant as possible for the people who attend here. So we are not going to air these things when everyone is there. That's, that's why we have brought in our own equipment. We have stayed quiet by ourselves. We have not tried to aggravate or in, interfere with anything that's going on there. So we have tried to keep it pleasant. That's what we're saying. Okay. And Susan, we did listen to you. We did. We did hear well, those. Did, and, then, and then you went to the state. The, the I didn't and, go. And she was here. She came to visit and she saw the locked kitchen I, I and said, remember. what is that about? I'm going to, she was going to investigate. I had nothing to do with that. That was, that was um, Donna Farmer going, seeing it and asking what, what, what it was about. She'd never seen it before. That's what that was about. I had nothing to do with that. <laughs> so if you'd like to set up a meeting, um, it would be wonderful okay. to iron these things out. Could I have your contact information, brother? Sure. Do you have it? Uh, <laughs> Susan, do you have it? I do, but I just want to make sure. COA. Oh, oh, I have the email address. Then, yeah. then use that one. It's That's okay. fine. That's fine. Right. Right. We'll, um, I do think the phone lines need to be separated in some way. That's, and one okay. way. Yeah, that's, that's theirs. That's not well, ours. And one way to do that is, this is why I'm saying it now, is elder service should have a new number because the number that you have now for the meal site is the one that local seniors have used for years and are still calling. So they are not looking up a new number to make to put in a COA 
concern. They're just using that number. So all those messages go to your meal site and we don't know what we receive and what we don't. So you shouldn't have to deal with that. You shouldn't well, have and to and deal I, with that. You know, I worked there all last week and I worked there two weeks before that. I heard every message Jan relayed. And, you know, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a little hurt. I mean, she comes out in snowstorm. She delivers like the mail. Um, she has done three nine one one calls in, in this. Just had one the other day. It's like, I, I really wish you had not brought this up in a public forum. It's not really, it's not really proper. I it is as it. far as the site, senior Excuse site me. itself is concerned. And you That's the where the issue comes. Okay, she says everything belongs to me. The air conditioners belong to me. They don't, they belong to the senior center. She reluctantly tells us we can't use these things. So what are we supposed to say? Um, she does a wonderful job. We're not taking that away from her, but deal who, with her what is the senior center? What belongs to the senior center as far as Everything equipment? Everything belongs to Okay, and but and we're being told. Except for what's in our little club, and right. I will take care but of them. We're being told we can't use it or we can't touch it. That's not the purpose of the um, person of the elder services. We know what you people do, and you do a wonderful job. Rick Hendrick, Rick Rhodes. I would just suggest that if you do have a meeting, why have Jan there too? So everybody has a chance right. to stay inside the case. Yes. Yeah, we're going to. We'll send an email tomorrow. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good evening, folks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And then you guys can have your PCBs. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, I don't want to go into what just happened, but I do want to talk about the phone system because I've seen this personally, okay? This, uh, two different phone numbers, okay? You have one, okay, for the Backdoor Cafe, which is 882-5251. COA has got 882-4073, all right? When the phone rings for the COA, it can be answered in the kitchen. So the site manager picks up a lot of calls. And I'll give you an example, okay? A resident had called in, said he, he wanted to talk to somebody in the COA because he has a powered wheelchair that he wants to know if the COA was interested in, okay? The site manager took the call, said, oh yeah, we want the wheelchair. I want you to deliver it to this particular residence, which occurred, okay? It was not a decision for that site manager to make, okay? The site manager should have never even been involved in that call. So those two lines have to be totally separated. The second problem is if somebody does not answer the COA's phone and it supposedly goes to the message recorder, okay, all these messages are getting automatically put on Lucy Tesner's email. They're not going to the chair, all right? All that's going to be separated and done. Okay, this can't go on. This has been going on for months and it's been talked about for months. The COA actually needs to have a totally isolated line, not part of the MyTel system. They need, they, they can't deal with any more interference. 
most of these calls that they're getting, they are confidential calls, they're dealing with medical issues, personal issues. None of this stuff should be available to anybody else. They should need to go through the chair or whoever the chair give as far as a person on the council to accept. I mean, I, I can't understand why this is such a problem. Well, you think never reach so I, I think, I think in, in Wu, I think authorization needs to be given to the council to get their own independent phone service. I mean, I can just say Board of Health has a direct line. It's part of MyTel and all voicemails. It's fine. You don't have health. another. You don't have another council uh, or phone system right. picking up your phone. You could get a. Right? You could get another phone, which is part of MyTel with its own. No, we don't, we don't want to be tied into MyTel. We want to be isolated from it. We don't want anybody else to have access to those no. calls. Oh, you wouldn't if yeah. if it was addressed correctly. I know Barbara and Jan had brought this to my attention. I started looking into it. We, I went downstairs, called with my cell phone. It rings on both ends. So we did start that. I contacted my towel. I'm getting the ring around. It's not as easy. I haven't forgotten. I tried. But the number that um, I have in the number that's listed, we were we had like three different numbers that were connected. So we were trying to figure out, because when I go in the portal, it's listed as a different number. So it definitely, there's a yeah. lot. For months and months, Lucy was telling the council that even though the messages were recorded, they could not be picked up because nobody knows what the password is and they're not able to reset the password. I this did. has all been kept like totally secret and Melody totally isolated. To do that. <laughs> okay, this is this whole phone thing is a bunch of crap. Let the council get their own independent line. I mean, that, that's the total answer to it. Get them out of my tell. Let them do what they want to do with their own phone. Okay. I mean, you the council would have to pay for it. Well, you're making them pay 10% of my help. And it's not working for them. So what the heck's the difference? We didn't know that. It's being broken down, yeah. And it's been established like that since I started. Yeah. Do all the words good? No. No, just, just another secret thing that they get charged with and nobody told them about, okay? This whole thing is crap. Let them get their own phone. Let them deal with their own communications. But now, whose number Barbara had stated that she would like for the kitchen to get a new number because you don't want to... Let the kitchen deal with that, okay? Yeah, we're we're required to do with the council. No, oh, you, you, we yeah. have to for the kitchen. Agree the agreement Just says that, that we provide it, the town provides it, no. and internet. Since the lines are already in, and I don't know if my tool is different from my bell, but... Can we just disconnect all three and with those lines and ask them to assign different phone numbers, just two, one for the kitchen and one for the senior center. And then neither one of them are old memory go-tos and the seniors will learn that the, the kitchen has this number mm -hmm. and the senior center has this number mm -hmm. and they shouldn't cross at all. I mean, it, it, then you're not having to get new service, which is a huge expense. And you're just changing the numbers. I mean, you have an independent phone line for the fax machine. I don't see why you can't get an independent number for the council. How often is that fax actually used? Every, Every day. day. Really? By still the using faxes? It's, 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 solely the for the, it's solely for the, solely for the elder, elder service. services of Worcester. We do have a fax machine upstairs. And it doesn't say that they couldn't be forced to use that. It just says they have to have access to a fax machine. That we're paying for... Two faxes that that twenty two dollars a month from the council on aging goes to the fax machine. I think so. Yeah. So you didn't use that to Yeah. Oh, I think I'm a that a little bit. I know. <laughs> Are you so maybe use that incoming Verizon line as a a, a phone yeah. call in, but change the number. Still get faxes. That's true. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But yeah, you know, with a bill be the same, it probably be more than twenty two dollars. That's just a fax line. No, it's the same. It's it would be the same. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, so. <laughs> I haven't you had just, a house phone in the first so long. Yeah, like in, you know, dial in sounds instead of whatever. The beep sound. I mean, and do you have to pay for outgoing faxes? No. No. It's the same. It goes over the so. and the town just absorb. What you do other? Four days for 
use in the fax machine today, do right. they? So if they get rid of the fax downstairs, no, they can just, just use this. Is there a strange cost to the town? Because it's just about a number. I mean, I don't know how, who uses fax, but I don't think that there's an additional cost when I get the bill. It's always the state flat rate. Okay. Any other real quick question? Okay. The laptop that was bought for the, the prior town accountant, which has been sitting upstairs in storage for a year and not being used, can that be assigned to the COA? Yes. Oh, I said yes because you guys already said that. No. But um, and when Steve had also said that his company was going to donate, I'm going to donate it personally. That's yeah. okay. it would be wonderful to have a site set up where seniors can come in and check want, their. You want a desktop or a laptop? I'm going to buy one and just donate it, brand new. I don't. Can you can choose whatever you want? You want okay. a desktop can, or a laptop? Can we talk to our committee for Of course you may. I haven't bought it yet, but I'll only get it within the next two weeks. So just tell me beforehand, I'll get it shipped from Dell. Okay, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. I just want to help you guys out with the desk and one for like a free show. Of course. Can I ask one question too about the liability for drivers? You were going to check with the council. It's a no. Yes, I did follow up with uh, with our insurance as well, and yes, unfortunately, if it's a no, personal vehicle, it's fine. We can deal with whatever would fall if anything happened. Personal insurance. Well, and I just want to make clear who would absorb the the cost for the setup too. I don't want that to be a surprise. Like, oh, we didn't know that we're going to get up. I think the town can pay for it. Okay. Just want to make it. I mean, it yeah. couldn't be $500. All we're doing no. is changing the username. It's got everything else I don't in think it. It's ever been set up completely. I'm just talking yeah. about the initial setup. You know, I don't know that it's ever been like, used. I just want to make sure that we know. Okay. Is there anything else that you need? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that would be wonderful. That would be wonderful. That would be very much appreciated because my understanding is originally there was, like the libraries have, a computer set up so that seniors can come in and do their whatever they need to do. When we're using one, well, the one that we no longer have was never used in that capacity. Yeah. It was a personal use. Right. And so to have another site would be wonderful. Don't you also have iPads? I want, can I ask you about that? Aaron, <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks. No, 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 no. I was over <laughs> and I would love to be able to let them use them, but I don't know who set up the iPads initially because everything is password locked. We can like those. Can you I could help you. Yeah. We don't. I think Philip will probably. I have no idea. I've never even seen the iPads. I have. I. I, 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 I assume this they, they must have been COVID. Something. Oh, I think they were. Yeah. Oh, but we we weren't here then. So I challenged them. Me neither. I think I'm done. <laughs> For now. That doesn't cool. mean I won't be awake tonight thinking of something. So would, would you, um, would the COA review the memorandum um, yes. and at their next meeting? Yes. I mean, I, I looked at it. I think it's a boilerplate. I think it really <laughs> writing what's expected. It doesn't talk about padlocks. It, um, so I think if you end up accepting this, there should be no question of what's appropriate. Right. And hopefully you have a new relationship moving forward. If, if if that were if the, even the old agreement were adhered to with just what was done on that, it would be fine. The power has reached out to consume other areas, and that's been the problem. Right. I mean, um, I, it was shared like the tables were moved, the tablecloths were removed. That's just silliness. Um, put it right back. We're planning on it. Uh, it, what we were hoping is that by changing those, because um, we were told they won't like that, 
give them an opportunity to see if they like it. Don't put them back before they even see what we've done. <laughs> so if they don't like them, we're happy to change them to something that's easier for them or whatever. But in the meantime, we'd but like to see if it works. There's 10 chairs that were inaccessible to somebody at a cane, a walker. It just made no sense. Or if they tried to get out, they could easily stumble over the legs of the chairs or whatever. It just was not appropriate. Next, Treasurer Wendy Graves. Hello. Hi. 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 So the board asked me to reach out to the bank to inquire about online payments. Um, so I reached out to our bank, UniBank, which has a product called UniPay. I've uh, used many, many years in a couple of different towns. So the only fee that would be related to the UniPay would be the ACH processing fee, which would be electronic. If you use an electronic check out of the um, checking account, that would be 50 cents per car. So if you had three bills, you put it all in one car, it would charge you 50 cents. If you wanted to use your debit or credit card, there's a convenience fee, and it's like between one and three percent. Yeah, so at the end of the yeah, right, like Visa too. Um, so there is a, a on their website there you can go in and you can see what the convenience fee is, and it won't charge you until you actually approve the fee. So you wouldn't get to it and then just hit enter. It would say, are you sure you want to approve these fees before you accept it? UniPay is a 24 seven secure user-friendly system that can be used for any town collections, um, current or pass, pass through taxes, donations, collections, departments such as uh, building, clerk, the board of health, the police, we can set up all those different departments. I have set up all those departments in other towns. I'm quite familiar with it. Um, the bank actually works with each department to get, you know, what they would like to collect, you know, try to make it a little bit easier so that they can pull a file into their software. Um, one important thing to note, it, it, it is maintains full functionality when used with a mobile device, because I know a lot of people these days use their phones uh, to pay the bills. <laughs> but they have other uh, options too, like bill present, uh, pres presentment, which is a two year image history. So someone who's doing your taxes, you can go in and you can print it out so you know exactly what you paid on your, your taxes. Um, there's also an auto pay feature, which allows the residents to set up automatic payments for their bills to pay full amount of the bill on the due date. But there's also scheduled payments, which allow the residents to schedule one future payment at a time versus enrolling in an ongoing auto pay plan. They have email and text notifications. So if you sign up for it, it'll remind, it'll tell you that there's a bill out there and how much it is and remind you to go in and you can pay it right there. Like it'll bring you right to that page. Um, pay by text. I guess I already talked about that. An e bill allows your residents the option to receive an email along with a notification directing them to view the bill. And they have Quick Pay, which is an extension of UniPay, which allows you to accept credit debit cards at the counter. So um, I'll get a swipe. So if someone comes in and they want to pay with their, their debit or credit card, they'll, they'll be able to do it right at the office. What's the cost to the town here? Yeah. There's no cost to the town. So is it the convenience for the taxpayer? Yes. Um, so there's no cost to the town. Right. So they pay the fees. Because I can tell you, I pay more than I pay for my taxes every single year. Because exactly. I pay a late fee. Me too. Ah. I, that's the same, same thing I do. Yeah, see, that'll avoid yeah. that. <laughs> I just want to You'll get a that. reminder. Yeah. <laughs> that's okay. weird, though, that they don't push it on like nothing to something. It's got to be a catch. 
They just push it on to the, I, I understand, like. Well, it goes to us. It goes to the person. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Well, I'm saying because the database, and we get all these features unlocked, or is it like. Well, we pick which features we want. That's it. And they, and you need to pay. But they don't charge you for that. And they work with Civic. Is it Civic Plus? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, you see all these other towns. Yeah, that everybody's on. Have we can yeah. add the link right to the yeah. website. I don't know exactly how many, but it's well over 200. Yeah. yeah. More than 50%. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's user friendly, too. Almost. But the catch is they get to hold the money. Like the money has to go to that bank. You can transfer it out, but you couldn't send it to CNTN or. Um, TD Bank, you know, has to go through that bank. Is that our bank currently? Yes. <clears throat> I would recommend it. So, yeah, I, I would love for the uh, treasurer to work on um, setting this up as an option for individuals who would like the convenience um, of uh, paying bills online and working with the departments um, should they choose to offer this as a convenient option. That would be a motion. Okay, second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you. Um, and I had some questions. Okay. Um, uh, Harper's payroll. Um, do you know if, um, I mean, I know we have Harper's uh, that processes the payroll. Do you know if we, pay for currently, my company is with Harper's. I go in every two weeks and submit my time. Um, I approve my people's time. <laughs> is that an option for people to put their time in? Do you know? That is an option, but we, we don't pay, pay for, for it. it. <laughs> okay. I'm just, I, I wonder, there's a lot of time spent on paperwork, having it brought in, scanned to the accountant. I wonder what the cost benefit would be um, of um, having that as an option, um, if we've ever looked at it, um, to see for efficiencies. In Hopkins, can you add in vacation time? Yes. Track all It'll that. track all that. How do we do that now? Paper and pen? Paper and pen. <laughs> um, it'd be a lot easier because before you get there. Patron. Yeah, you would say it right You can on. see what you can you can go into Harper's and you can see your balance. Yeah. Yeah. Inquire about that too. There was, there was one other thing I was gonna ask you. Do you remember what it was? Did <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. say something. Mail machine? What is it? Mail machine. Yeah, that was <laughs> yeah, unrelated. <laughs> okay, that's all right. I'll I'll remember it next time. Is something we have to do for the bond. Um, I think I have all the paperwork now. I just scanned it to her, so hopefully tomorrow she'll let me know if there's anything else, and then they'll um, produce the schedule. Okay. Oh, something to be voted. Yes. It's just to be official. Do you have the yes. form? Okay. Okay. She's uh. Well, along the, the, the like year. Year. Yeah. And I think, I mean, can we vote on that since it was not expected at the chair? It's, it's on here. Oh, it is on here. Okay, okay. awesome. Nice. Great. <laughs> Talked about this for the annual, we said 10 years. That's what we talked about. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. The option of the maximum useful life of the fire truck to be financed proceeds of $850,000 borrowing authorized by the town vote passed June 12, 2023, Article 11, and September 14, 2023, ballot question. If I determine pursuant to general law chapter 44, section 7 1, be 10 years. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.
So, um, I'm here tonight to discuss a long board has had a discussion with uh, the previous session. Um, and we, between Peter and I, had discussions over the years with various select people and people come before the board and have asked for copies of personal handbooks, uh, personal policies, and um, so now we have a new assessor and I'm to find out a former assessor and worked here 17 years without a single paid vacation day, sick day, holiday, and there it is in your general bylaws that says this person was entitled to all of these benefits and now we have had a new clerk and now it's the assessor and it's come to our attention. This was the document that we were really should have seen or been told about many years ago. Priscilla said she doesn't recall who told her when she first started here. Her time was told that she wasn't available. There was no benefits for her. So all of those years, she went unpaid for all of those. How would that be? And now our new one wants to be compensated. And of course, retroactive because somebody, other, whoever, when you sign the paper, that you do your W-2s and all that other stuff when you sign up for the town, shouldn't somebody have told her? I don't know whose responsibility that is. There's no HR person, there's no town administrator, but for years, personally, have asked about personal policies. In the 40 years I've been working in municipal government in five different towns, they all have personal handbooks that spell out all this stuff that's buried in your general bylaw. So I guess I was asking for the wrong document. So. Even when that person was here doing your um, writing, all of your um, job descriptions, job descriptions, <clears throat> and complain to him that <laughs> there was all of this missing stuff for part-time employees. Uh, any other part-time employees not know that they're they have benefits available to them? I mean, I, I'm here to rant. <laughs> And I'm here to find some compensation for these two individuals who went all this time without a single paid something. Well, that's my rant. And how we're going to fix it. And I'm not going forward from this day that they start something. These people are owed something. It's uh, chapter six under the personnel rules and regulations, um, and it clearly provides um, a um, part-time employee um, in what they're eligible for. And a part-time employee is someone who um, works, uh, employees scheduled to work less than 20 hours per week, 52 weeks per year, um, and it describes the holiday benefits, the sick leave, the vacation leave, or part-time employee. Okay. Bereavement leave. I mean, you know, Crystal was here through all that time when her dad was sick, the dad died. I mean, all the to take time off. She didn't get paid for any of that. Any regular part-time employee who works less than 40 hours per minimum of 20 shall receive vacation prorated right. by number of hours actually worked. You know, so you work two days a week, you get two vacation days. I don't know, I just, I, it's it such a loss to find that out. At the end of the fiscal year. And you, on you, sick leave will not be compensated at the termination of employment and will be forfeited. Um, no. no, not on there. 
Um, I will say related to this, um, I saw in the Barry Gazette that uh, the town of Barry uh, is looking at a, um, an HR um, person, town of Rutland, I believe, is looking at an HR person, the town of New Braintree is looking at an HR person. Um, I think this is a, an obvious area where we are at risk um, in light of the fact that our bylaws um, clearly state one thing. Um, and um, doesn't look like because we don't have anybody really responsible for it. I think we need to talk to. Um, I think your branch is in the process of looking at somebody. Yeah, asking to regionalize. I don't think we cannot afford no, I, no. To, yeah. to continue on this way. Right. Yeah. And, and I know, you know, on these Thursday meetings with Ann Gobi, um, you know, I brought up a couple things and other all town administrators and like one or two boards of selectmen on these calls. But, um, you know, I, I think that's a, another resource um, that we could reach out to um, of how other towns are doing it as small as we are. And this also goes to the fact that we need to look at our bylaws and really. Well, <laughs> This is the library. Plus thing. the library. Uh, yeah, she, she was told she four hours over there. They cut her hours. But the weird thing is the bylaws don't say a minimum. It just says regularly scheduled less than 20 hours per week. So the Board of Health has a clerk that works between three and six hours a week. According to the bylaws, in my opinion, she's eligible for leave because the bylaws don't say that but her what she was given on hire said she was not eligible. Um, while you're here, I, I wonder um, if one of the things that I had um, some people ask me about are what are the <laughs> available statements for residents of OCAM? Um, and I'm just wondering um, if there's, uh, I, I believe we have an abatement for um, farm, the farm equipment that the town voted in a few years back that excise tax is waived um, for certain farm mm -hmm. farms. Um, I believe we have a senior 65 and over. Um, I don't know if it's the veterans where veterans and seniors, if they can um, volunteer to reduce their um, taxes, have we adopted that? We haven't adopted the senior okay. work over. Um, so looking at other towns, it seems as though um, there are additional options available. And I'm just wondering if our town has recently looked at all of the state allowed yeah. um, ones you to decide. Put us on the agenda sometime. I'll come in and do a little. Think it might even still have a PowerPoint. As we voted in several times over there, one specifically for veterans. And if you just get one that qualifies, right. it's a good thing. Yeah. But that has to be at a town meeting. So, yeah. Um, 
but then the assessors have the forms and they would decide if they're eligible for yes. it. So, yeah, we had a, um, uh, I had asked if I could organize a cleanup of the third floor and second floor and um, we had people volunteer for that and someone to volunteer for um, helping the building commissioner. Um, we have a nice um, application for appointment, which is really for like, I know you did, but yeah. um, application for appointment too. That's what's online as the volunteer application. Uh, but I also noticed that how do you decide who you pick? Um, like under what conditions would you accept a volunteer? Do we do quarry checks? We don't really have a policy on that. Um, and I've provided the board. Um, I did a search of um, uh, the web on volunteer policies from other towns um, and I provided one from Wilbraham. Um, and um, I think it would be beneficial to have a, a policy that goes along with the application um, so that we're not, um, we don't get in trouble down the road for um, whether or not someone, um, if there's a health insurance claim, you know, it clearly states that they're, that they need to have their own insurance. Obviously, if they get injured while volunteering, there's a, we're responsible for that, but um, there may be quarry checks for certain um, volunteer positions. Um, so I'd like to see uh, some uh, look at um, creating a volunteer policy. And I'd be happy to uh, draft, um, update Steel to the town of Wilbraham um, and um, <laughs> insert OCAM um, and um, remove some of the, like the town administrator. Um, but there's, uh, I, as a starting point, um, I did look at the MMA. I did not find any uh, sample policies as municipal association. Um, and I don't know if we would want town council to look at it, but I believe you did get input from them. I did. And they said at a minimum, we would want a hold harmless, which I've provided mm -hmm. uh, um, a copy from Westford. Um, so we won't just steal all Wilbur Wilbraham's, um, <laughs> but um, there's an adult uh, release of claims and then a minor. Um, release of claims um, that I think we should have along with the volunteer policy. And uh, I know uh, Chris Dunbar, uh, who worked uh, for quite a bit, oh, no, not Chris Dunbar, sorry, Ray Duffy, um, who worked um, for the Red Cross um, and another volunteer organization had offered to assist um, in looking at um, policies based upon his experience. Uh, and I guess right now I would ask that we approve Susan Turnbull uh, as a volunteer um, since she did apply uh, two weeks ago. Um, she submitted an application. Yes. I'll work on that. And maybe if we get an HR person, they'll come with a whole book of all these things. They probably have a standing. I'm sure they do. People come. Go ahead, Joe. Okay. Joe. Joe, I feel we still going. Uh, where we at? We're gone. Uh, we don't really know. Well, yeah, you don't really know. Um, everything on the spectrum or national grid pretty much uh, is null and void. It's just an excuse. They passed the bug. Uh, we're into this uh, 18 months, um, mm -hmm. approximately 15 since they took a check for $98,000. And the most we've gotten done is some tree work. And I hear on the other side of town, they may have started running a line, but that was just recently as of September. So it's been a long process and trying to deal with these companies is damn near impossible. 
you get no information from the women in the dock. And that's it. I mean, the tree work on our road still isn't even done. We're told it's done, but it's not. So, I don't know. Wish I had more answers, but. I can add. So we were told in June that they would be done by, I'm sorry. So you didn't. Lynn Thompson, sorry about that. Um, we were told November, December to be completed of this year. Oh, we got our trees. Oh, it's like October. Yeah. November. yeah. I don't think it's going to be complete. Uh, I don't think so. No, um, and they just don't care. They just don't answer. They don't respond. They don't answer. They don't do anything. Are you Joe, on? if I may, uh, Ellen Flagg, Grace Lane, here on camp. Uh, they've been on Grace Lane running lines the last two weeks. So I mean, no, they're, they're, they're done. Yeah. I mean, I think they're done. They were pulling the last lines, it looked like yesterday. Okay. Well, that's something they, anyway. So they, they are, I guess, depending on I think they've been no, right, small, yeah, I mean, but they are. Progress just they are, recently started, things are started since yeah. September. So, I mean, up until that point, you know, we were dead in the water. Uh, it's nice to see things that are getting done, you know, but still can't get answers out of them. Yeah. You know, I brought attention the other day. Um, the tree work on our road wasn't done. And I just got told, well, you know, when they come to run the lines, they'll notify somebody. Well, you know, another excuse to delay the project. So, uh, our office has been working details for the uh, tree companies and the guys running the lines for approximately the last three weeks, maybe almost up to a month. They've been working on Grace's Lane on and off. Yep. They worked on uh, Sanders Road. Yep. And I think they were up on Lincoln Road too for a little while. Right. Yep. Um, I know they're running line, like Alan said. Uh, if they, yeah, they ran it down Grace's Lane and they're also running it on Sanders yep. as we speak. Yeah. Well, so Friday, they were, Friday, they had the school out there and they were. Since September. I mean, right, right, right. Until then, we were, you know. So um, it's mainly been the last three weeks of honest work. Yeah, actually, yeah. Um, and we had did have some committee member changes, which kind of screwed us up a little bit, trying to get the information, contact information, stuff like that. So uh, I think we're back on our feet somewhat at this point. Um, but like I said, up until September, progress mm -hmm. was extremely slow, frustrating, and aggravating. And us on the committee would... Love to be able to come to the town and say, you know, we're doing everything we can and it's moving along nicely, it, you know, but it kind of feels like we let a lot of people down. In my opinion, it does. We took this, you know, to help everybody in town that didn't have it and trying to deal with these big corporations is horrible. They just don't care about us. They don't answer questions. Like I said, they don't respond. Nothing. The spectrum so, supervisor was on uh, uh, Sanders Road the other day. So if I see him again, I'll get his card, his business card for you. Um, did you get his name? I did not. I just kind of drove through it. He, he told me he was. I was going to say, uh, do you guys have any contact information for John? Yeah, Dyer? Dyer. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's yeah. the one that he goes Suzanne's. Through. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty regular with them. I know that Suzanne so. had stated before she stepped away that after they got the first half of the track, the communication had pretty much fizzled down. Since uh, we issued them a check for ninety eight thousand and six of twenty two, and they've been sitting yeah, on since, right. up until September. Yeah, so we don't know when they're going to ask for the other. So <laughs> I think it's supposed to be <laughs> upon yeah. completion. They can't ask for until September. Yeah, they could ask. When that may be. Yeah. You know, they said we. We wish we had better news for everybody that doesn't have internet because our road is one of. We're frustrated, but you know, but. We still have to change the polls on your road. Yeah, well, that's another thing. We can't even get a definite answer. We've been told two polls. We've been told all the polls. And now, you know, that was when they wanted us to pay for it out of pocket. Now that they're getting a the check, it's a fixed rate. I'm curious to see, is it going to be one poll or any polls? Now that it's coming out of there, right? So, you know, good luck. Good luck trying to get an answer. Cable company, you know? any polls that are marked with a big white X, that's national rate. The cable companies will not run string line on those poles with those big X's on until the poles are changed. Three of what two one are on East Hill? Yeah. Have an X yeah. Yeah. I know one's on my yeah. property. Yeah. Yeah. I know one. Yeah. 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 So um, several of them. Yes, yeah. several. And they once again, when you talk to Spectrum, they say it's up to National Grid. National Grid says it's up to Spectrum. They keep passing the buck, bouncing it back and forth. Well, I know they changed them all with race lane. All the polls. So all, all new polls. Yeah, they put yeah, all new then, all the polls from where we are up. And when the Evan built his house, they had to put new polls in there down to get the permit for the building. Yeah. So 
like I said, up until September, things are still pretty bad. So we're, we're doing the best we can. You know, we wish things were different for everybody because we certainly know how frustrating it is for everybody not to have this impact. Phoenix is still getting there. Wonderful. We're hoping so. Yeah. You know, um, where? Oh, Phoenix. Really? Phoenix is putting all the underground away right now. Out of this whole cable thing. How about the cable contract? Isn't that also up for renewal? Yes. yes. We're, we're um, I didn't have much to do with that one. Uh, that was all, um, the last meeting we had when it was, we were still a full committee, uh, Kathy Dunn, East Hill Road, by the way. Um, as a committee, we voted not to renew the cable committee, the cable contract. Then over the summer, we were all, it was shared to us that it was contract out, it was due in a day. Really. We were told we didn't need one, that we do yeah. need one. Um, we do need and one. all this is pending yes. on this. Do we have John set Mayer, stuff along Spectrum, with everything? So. And we have it in our minutes. He's the one who told us we did not need a cable contract. So the town council says. Yeah. Well, and again, we were we were not told any of this. <laughs> I might have been here. This. this would be email from town council on what Perfect. has to be done. Yeah. Yes. Anything yes. that we yeah. could, yeah. any information mm -hmm. that you guys have would be great because we're in the dark. A lot of the cable end of it also depended on everything we got going on here as well. Public access, YouTube, this, that, the yeah. other. The license has nothing to do with that. It had to be work done. The license has nothing to do with who's got cable or not. It's a 10 year license for the town, for the entire town. Right, we had to meet requirements though. No. We, 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 we were told otherwise. Is, is it possible for us to have the Board of Selectmen ask? Old committee members for yeah. documentation because we're what documents you need anything because we were completely left out of the loop on a lot of this a lot of a lot of things were done outside of the committee they have a committee no 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 <laughs> Well, if we do, we don't know what it is. Yeah, I'm like, I've never emailed you. Yep. No, I usually <laughs> just email you directly yeah. from my own personal, and that's what I emailed you. Yep. For the next members were using their private ones. Oh. I think that a couple of the members that were formerly yeah. on the cable committee they had, had other emails. Other town they had yes. other towns, so maybe that's, maybe I'm just saying, could have gone. I, I have no idea. Why don't we have each set up? Be great. And I can forward a lot of the material to you. Sure. That'd be great because if you need financials and all that stuff. Um, you know, I've already trigger. submitted stuff. Um public record. Committee. You shouldn't have to submit anything but an email. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no yep. And you need this. Yeah, we're just people so are asking us, so we're like, I don't know. So we'll call it like CIC. Yep. Yep. When does the contract have to be? June. I mean, that. <laughs> that's you think about the cable. Cable, yeah. But that's it. Oh, it's only cable. It wouldn't shut off our internet, which is part of. No. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> and Lucy is the um, select board member working with uh, the cable internet committee. Is that correct? Was there a select board member part of that? Is that's news to me as well. Yeah, that's it's an assignment from us. Okay, I thought I remember reading that somewhere. Your contact. Okay. So Good I, to we, know. We may, may want to change that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'd be happy to yeah. be a contact. <laughs> How often would you, I mean, would you like us to just pass on information to you guys when we get it, or do you want us to once a month or? 
as you can. Okay. It's, everything is time sensitive. Yep. So yep. the more we know, the quicker, the better. <clears throat> and I mean, does the would it help if the board is selected? <laughs> <laughs> well, to the uh, the person, um, <laughs> the supervisor is what I meant to say. Um, to ask them to come to a board meeting? I mean, would yep. they even acknowledge that? Well, yeah. I, I mean, they don't really care about small rural communities, but um, well, we don't have a choice of who to use. Exactly. So I think it's a good idea. And invite the CIC to come to that meeting mm -hmm. as a joint meeting. Yeah. Great. I take them two months to come. Do you have? contact because I yes. don't okay yeah I, I don't, don't have forward because I think Suzanne did most of the or at least um the emailing with and John is that most copies I have copies I of his yeah we have yes. copies of his emails so we have it here okay and you can either give it to me or just email it to me okay thank you Sure. Second with that. So much. Thank you. I have a copy done. I had a couple comments on the radio also. Not on the board. He's right. I did a lot of research on the budget as we put it together. I think we, we have something we should bring forward to talk about. Or wait till Aaron gets back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Want some water? <laughs> I've got some of this. It's a white stick. I got a white stick. Yeah. <laughs> <I'm laughs> <so funny. laughs> you have water in the other room. Sure. Um, one of the things I did in the kitchen is, this is sorry, heating up the notes a couple months ago. I brought your attention at the last meeting or the meeting before that. We were way overspending what was in the budget for part time health. And I started thinking, how did this happen? What, what, what's there? I went back, and there was emails from you, from myself, from uh, to go back to stuff from Brad Conte at the meetings. One of the things that came to light is we repeatedly said there was a full time chief and a full time officer. We needed 32 hours of part time help. And I mean, I have you literally saying that in an email to me when I was asking questions that we got to cover 32 hours of part time help. And I went back and I, I found some information that said that the, I think it was $18.55. Is that a correct number for what we had used? If you look at what we funded part time help for, we only funded 27 hours. But I think somewhere when we were doing the numbers back and forth, something about $5,000 dropped out. I don't know why. I, I could not find it. But I think a mistake was made there. So, unless there's something you know that you did that I'm not aware of. We also had twenty thousand dollars being reimbursed. Right. So wages from the state. So we factored the twenty thousand in, and then it evaporated. And so I did some research myself, and I talked to Lori, and I asked her what happened. What had happened? And she said, unbeknownst to myself or Sue, they were using that money for the other end. 
on the uh, school that everybody went to. So every, every time somebody went to school, it got paid out of that. Bridge. So I, we were all counting on the 20K and it, it just never showed up. It's, yeah, it, it, I mean, I'm sure it's there, but I'm just saying that when I went back and looked at it, if you were trying to fund the full police force for full and part time, we did underfund it based on the budget. Now, again, if there was money that was in some grant or something that wasn't built into the budget, that's that was beyond anything that I could find any reference to in any of the meetings we had. Now that you bring that up, you may not have funded the two and a half percent. That could be too. You know, that's a, that's a good thought. I, I'm that's just a, thinking about it, that. It, it's, it's like a five thousand dollar for the year difference. It should have been. I have it just under thirty one thousand is where I think it should have been. In hindsight, at time, and I'm not sure how we got to the twenty six because there was a lot of moving parts because right. we got close to the town meeting. You know, right. there was a, there was a lot of communication between everybody. Yeah. But I, when I saw that, it's okay. Well, that's a five thousand dollar miss that somehow occurred that um, had nothing to do. I just saw this today, so I didn't know what numbers Fred was looking for. I just knew that I felt we had maybe underfunded that one area. It was just a, just making an observation. That, that's, and it might have been like two and a half percent. And it could have been that also. Yeah. And the other part of that, too, there was an unusually high burn rate for the uh, our time budget due to the fact that we've had an unusual uh, amount of crimes that required a detective to investigate my detective is part-time we had a, a you know i can't speak to the names but i can tell you that we had a couple of sexual assaults uh we had a, a child pornography case and we also had a uh a registered sex offender in town who reoffended and was released and came back and we had to investigate him again and i had three officers from the part-time uh part of the department stuck in court for months dealing with this guy. But in the end, I got to say it was worth the investment because he got another 11 years and he's now back in, in incarcerated. And those were 24 expenses. In other words, the current fiscal year expenses, most of them are. Yeah. They, yeah. They, a lot of it fell onto this, uh, onto okay. this cycle. Yeah. Okay. So the burn rate was a little high due to that. And I mean, that's unforeseen. It's kind of like, you know, Kevin with the salt and sand, we can't really predict what's going to happen at any given time. And if we have a major storm or something like that, and I have to call resources in, that's also going to tap into that as well. So any future things like, you know, unanticipated, uh, basically funding I needed for storms or whatever. Mm -hmm. I think I wrote that, wrote that in there. You know, it's, it's, it's coincidental, but your total request for new money is about $1,000 more than what I think the shortfall was in the initial funding. I mean, it's just again, close. Yeah. And you think that will get you through the year, even though you're not counting on. Yeah. So I, what I did was I, I calculated the 32 hours, and I calculated vacation and, and sick time, and I also calculated unforeseen circumstances. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's yeah. So that bottom line number is what I need. I have twelve thousand three hundred dollars. <laughs> Let's see what I wrote down in here. It's twelve thousand three hundred dollars uh, left from the reimbursement grant, which covered the training, and so that money can go in there. If I do a line item transfer of ten thousand, all I really be asking for the finance committee to approve or for the board of selectmen to approve is sixty two forty nine twenty eight. Really, the board of selectmen question first on. I mean, that's your guys' decision. We we would you know then go to the finance committee. I can't speak for them because. I'm the only one here and two other members, but uh, again, I, I feel that there was a, a correction that we could have made if we had caught it to the initial budget uh, that we put together last year. You also mentioned in here the training expense account. Mm -hmm. That's where you want to transfer 10000 out of. Well, if to keep it within my budget, yeah. If I can go outside of my budget and you want to make it 10000 249 that would be... Well, what 16,000 rather. What I'm getting at is we can't transfer 10,000 out of the budget mid year. Okay. We have to wait for the special wait, yes. or an article on have the people voted to move into the unknown. Yeah, yeah. Line item. Otherwise, same. you're going to wait till May. Right. We're not going to wait till May. No. Yeah, no. 
or something like this. Right? And you have until the 10th. So would that be the special <laughs> council meeting? I don't think that may make sense. Yeah. Or 16 or, or so the, it would be the yeah, transfer 16. to 10 and then an additional six. Yeah, I think the, the total number would, would then change to 16,249. But it's only 6,000. No, no. It won't change because the six is raising the program. Right. Ten is being transferred. Okay. It's already, it's already appropriated. It's, it's stayed, yeah. Oh, okay. So. I would be in support of a no. <laughs> Fred, give me this when you came in because we're talking about it. So yeah, you said it makes sense from his perspective, just informally. So I think we would have no problems. I think let the town vote. It's reasonable. Yeah. It'll be two. Right, one for the sixth. And then the other 10,000 for transfer. And then the town meeting is going to be the 11th of December. Well, do you have enough money in the account to go through till then? I believe you do. But yeah, I mean, you may want I, to check that. Yeah, what I've done is uh, where we would have used the part time, like on a holiday, I actually worked uh, Veterans Day. Just not, you know, we both actually worked a full time, you guys both worked. To spare us for from spending the time and a half rate that would be we give them a holiday and uh, a couple of days during the week when we could have used them, I actually wound up working doubles to make up for it. You said so. about ten thousand left. Right? I saw you. I'm like, <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah. Okay, Twelve thousand five fifty five remaining right now. So you're gonna have the that's after October. So you just have November. You'll pay for it and it's not going to be close. So you should be okay. Yeah, you'll be okay. Yeah. We do have a lot coming up next month. I'll be uh, Roger Williams University from the 13th to, is it the 16th? Um, all in service training has been reduced to online. So officers will be doing the in service training while on duty. In the station, except for the mandatory in person, which gets which gets paid out of training anyway. Right. We just had our fire rounds. We have um, research for Taser coming up, so that's I think that's early no, uh, November. A bunch of grants. How are you doing that? Oh, I'm glad you asked. There's a lot of material there. So we were approved for the camera grant and the contract is in and I'm just waiting for them to co-sign it and release the funds. <clears throat> so as soon as that, I get that letter of acknowledgement back from them, we'll be able to buy the, the uh, body worn cameras. Uh, we did receive another almost $5,000 in um, highway safety grant money. And what I'm thinking about doing is to augment the uh, part-time budget is run some of those shifts on Saturdays, pay it out of the grant. You have to write, you have to make three stops uh, an hour and they can usually answer calls in between. So I think it's a good double-edged sword for that. A lot of small departments do that. Yeah. Uh, I haven't heard back yet on the uh, burn grant. I'm still waiting for that. And I'm, Pretty confident that we're going to get it. Fifty thousand. Yeah, it's fifty grand, and that's going to buy us uh, six new portable radios with digital capacity, and hopefully six tasers. Awesome. We need to replace the tasers that we currently have because the uh, company Axon will no longer warranty or guarantee those uh, tasers because they're out of date. So you said that before. Yeah. 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 So we're kind of running on borrowed time. <laughs> Uh, other than, like I said, we've been 
unusually busy this time of year. Uh, other than that, staffing was on the agenda. What's that? Staffing was on the agenda. It was, yeah. So, uh, yeah, if you want to talk about that for a minute, I've got, I'm anticipating at least two leaving. One I know for sure, the other is up in the air. She took a job with uh, WPI, and we really haven't seen much or heard much from her since. So she went through their training program, and I anticipate losing her. But Lucas Wise is definitely gone. He's already in his fourth phase of going to Worcester PD, so he's as good as gone. <clears throat> Did you replace Mike Sweet? No. You're not adding. You're, you're replacing vacancy. <laughs> yeah, I have three candidates and I have three losses, basically. Candidates are trained. So all three candidates are trained. They've all been put through their psyche valves. At tests, physicals, and they have experience and equipment. So the only equipment I really need to give them is probably shirt, uh, shirts and jackets. Where did they get the psych and the medical? So one of them we paid for, which was uh, Lucy was on that interview process with us. So we, he, we sent him to everything already in anticipation of hiring him because it was a go ahead at that point. The other two already had Dr. Madonna do their psychological evals from their current employers. Oh. So we're not paying for those, if, that, if that's where you're going with it. Yeah, that's one way. <clears throat> yeah, they're all fairly recent uh, psyche evals. One is a uh, detective in training right now. He's an officer with a few years experience. One just graduated the full-time academy eight months ago and is working full-time at, of all places, Worcester State. No. Both of these guys who work at Worcester State, and they just had that murder down there. So they're, they're going to come with experience, and uh, they're kind of the turnkey officers. It's not like we're bringing in fresh, raw recruits that don't know the first thing about it. So, Do you have any um, turnover data? Like... How many come in each year? How many go out? For OCAM? Yeah. I don't, but I will tell you this. We had a lot of people that stuck around for a long time. We had a lot more officers. Uh, COVID and police reform wiped us out. Charlie Baker's parting shot to the law enforcement community was to pass uh, police reform. Now, Massachusetts, as Don knows, is the poster child for uh, doing it right. Massachusetts has always been the, the state that was looked at nationally as doing it right. For some unknown reason, they decided that we weren't doing it right and they had to change everything. And they passed laws that had previously already been approved 10, 20 years ago. And Don can tell you, you he was probably a young officer. They took away our slappers, our, uh, uh, what do you call those? Um, the wrist things. Anyway, the, the claw. They took away the, the claw. A lot of stuff that was very impactful to somebody's um, body if you use them. And the chokehold. I had to laugh when they said, oh, you know, we're going to do away with the chokehold. We're going to make it absolutely illegal. They eliminated that 20 years ago. They don't even teach it in the curriculum. So I don't know why they felt the need to write all this into legislation when it was already there. I started in 1974, and they did not teach the chokehold in 74. Right. So... Again, the legislature. The one thing that does bother me about uh, outlawing a chokehold, though, is if you're dying, somebody's killing you, they're in the act of murdering you, and you choke them out and live, they're going to prosecute you because it's now against the law. That's what happens when they pass laws at 4 10 a.m. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yep. All the equipment's uh, working fine. Everything's up to maintenance. Vehicles are running good. I'm curious um, how OCAM compares um, with the rate of pay um, and um, to uh, other area towns. We're, uh, we're lacking very much. 
So the average pay for a part-time patrolman now at a starting rate is about $26 an hour. And we're on deployment. Our sergeants make $20.15 an hour for a supervisor, part-time supervisor. That's why I was curious about the retention rate. Um, end up spending more money to get give people a little bit of experience and then they leave. Um, so we've become what Boylston PD used to be. And he's probably going to laugh. The revolving door of justice. You bring people in, you get them trained, you get the experience they need. They put their resumes out and they're gone. And Matthew Matarosian is a good example of that. He actually went to Boylston of all places because Boylston now pays a, a highly competitive wage. And, uh, you know, we trained him, we brought him in, we trained him, we did everything. And he actually joined the military and come back, worked for us for a short time, and then applied out because the money is better somewhere else. I know Other, the details really are the only benefit, really. Right. Because uh, financially, we're not right. providing. I think for the most part, the, the main body of the people that we have here are here because they love the town of Ocan and, and they do get a benefit to work in details. Other than that, I think they'd be gone too. And uh, just a, a footnote on all of this, surrounding towns have no shame in coming to our offices and saying, jump ship, we pay more. It happens on the regular. I think that transparency is a good thing um, for OCAM residents to know where we're paying people as we look to the future. Yeah, you've ever tell Facebook page. Yes. Mm -hmm. The PD. Yep. Yeah, we post some stuff on there. Um, I did a lot of the hawk. Yeah, that was <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Kevin got a lot of attention that there. That was awesome. So I did an update on the hawk recently. He uh, he's doing better, and it looks like he you know he may go through rehabilitation. We don't know. We'll see. Time will tell. Those quarterly reports you put the board. Well, Maribel has, uh, she put the most recent one on the uh, website. Oh. And so she's given me access to the website and I'm going to have to sit down and figure it out. But I'm going to start uploading the uh, quarterly reports right to the website. Yeah, that'd be good. Then let everybody Come on over it. with the coffee. I'll show you. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget the donuts. Well, uh, see the stereotype? <laughs> see the stereotype? Bagels, bagels, bagels. Yeah. <laughs> You're one that went to WPI. Do they still have a rule that they cannot work for any other department? So I don't know. I, I don't think so because my detective works for WPI. So I don't think they have that rule. And if they do, he's definitely violating it. And I hate to lose him. And he loves the town of Oak and that's why he's here still. Just don't tell him about our YouTube channel. Right? Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> but for the most part, the people that stick around really do love the town and, and uh they'd love to live here if they can afford it on you know part time salary, but that's not gonna happen. Mm -hmm. If it's a and then it's a replacement. Yeah, replacement. Yeah. So. yeah, I never did replace Mike and, and uh I hate losing him, but how yeah. reasons he yeah. had to, you know, make that decision himself. For the next meeting, why don't you have him come in? Okay. Yeah, the good candidates, and Lucy was on the, uh, the interview for each one of them. Okay. I take that back. Uh, Evan, she wasn't on Evans. Evan actually uh, spent a lot of time in Ocam. He worked for Pine Acres as a security guy down there. Uh, Evan Gaylord okay. lives in Charlton. Uh, been a police officer for six or seven years now. Just a, a good kid. He gets it. No small towns. Knows how you know it should be done. Two, two of them. One of them is Jared, 
apologize. I just want to make clear to the board that this individual also owns a firm. He did contact me via email six months, eight months ago, um, interested in firm services. And now he's submitted an application as an individual um, and then submitted sent his father's resume as well, because it's a father-son company, uh, in case the board wanted to go with firm, which he already knows we have firm. And then the second one made it very clear that she has no intention in leaving her full-time job in Leicester and would only be available one day a week in person on Fridays. Did you both of them? I think that um, uh, whatever whoever we pick, I think we need to look at transferring current responsibilities of scanning and interacting between boards and the accounting that needs to leave the yes. administrative. Assistant. I think I've expressed that to both of you. It's it's many yeah. extra hours outside of the administrative assistance responsibilities that are. Um, uh, being taken away um, from other important things. Yeah. So I, 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 I think um, both of these uh, candidates are worthy of an interview. Um, yes, and Lori, who is the accountant that is signed to OPM through the current firm, said she'd be more than happy to sit in on an interview. If you would like, just from an accountant's perspective, know what questions to ask or, you know, her professional opinion. And yes, I just want to make it clear just one more time that once a new body is hired, I would like to be completely eliminated from the equation. As soon as possible, we're spending a lot of money on consulting. Now, for an interview. For an interview, I mean, I know that. Could we do it on a Friday afternoon? That's up to you. Yeah, me. I mean, I'll reach out to them and pick a date. Maybe if you can give me two Fridays. Yeah, so any Friday. Any Friday. During my lunch break. <laughs> <laughs> Friday, I'm not available. But not this Friday. So any other Friday in November. Any time after uh, twelve is usually. Next up is the most likely liaison assignments. I was thinking the budget season. If we each took two departments, they can communicate with us. Uh, it might be a little easier to go through. Yeah. So, what I was thinking is um, highway police. You okay? I would take fire and library, and Lucy would have the boards and committees and the school. Oh. Mm -hmm. Things are a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
pick up rusty snipe and lay up. Yes. The insurance. Yes, this is just the um, retiree insurance uh, renewal. Oh, Even yes. though the town does not offer it, or for have the bylaw offer it uh, through my or acknowledge it. For no current employees no, uh, enrolled. Yes, you have to offer it. No current employees enrolled. Mm -hmm. What insurance is that, if I can ask, Brad Taylor? Mine. Yeah, and what is it about? Retirees. FedEx. FedEx. We don't currently have that? We do. We do have it? We have to, by law. We have to offer it. We don't have to pay for it. I'm confused. I never heard okay. about it. When someone retires. Yeah. They go on the MedEx plan in the panel, but they pay 100% of the cost. Cobra. Well, no. Is Basically. there a portion? It's, it's the full portion. It's the full portion that they get to pay for. When was this? Uh, when did this come in? When you were on the board, when you we went to my. Uh, you were on the board, we did it last year. Okay, so this. This has nothing to do with the insurance that we've been talking about in the past. It would be the, the I think the town meeting was to cover the costs of that. Cover 50% of it was what the town meeting wanted. This is not that. Okay. This is the state law that we don't have a choice in. I, I did uh, hear something about it from the state club about the cherry sheet, et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, there's no cost in the town meeting. And, and mine has already negotiated the best rates possible. Mm -hmm. We're in a group plan. That's is it specific to OCAM or is it their group plan of all their no specific OCAM? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, do we have a motion? Just a motion to accept the. Okay, I would move we accept the uh, Maya health benefits for medics. Second. Aye. There's chapter 90 reimbursement. Okay. That road is great. I've not been on Beach and Road. Oh, this is good. Race tracks, both. I was, yeah, that's <laughs> exactly, but at least it keeps you in the right side of the lane because of the yellow. Oh, we hope that corner of is not good. State reimbursement chapter 90 program for $198,700 in two. I would move we ex, are we ex. Requesting or accepting? Uh, move we accept the. We are. I move we request the reimbursement for Hunt Road at um, one hundred ninety eight thousand seven hundred dollars and two cents. Okay. Aye.
Second one is for 161224 dollars 26 for Beecham Road. I would move we, uh, we request the state reimbursement for Beecham Road at $161,224.26. David Does the board have any new business? Um, under new business, just a letter of resignation from Kitty Menard today. I would move we accept with regret. Um, I, I believe we've received two town clerk applications. Um, either currently work in a role or formerly have worked. Where is it um, posted currently? Um, on the website, on MMA, and I don't have access to the Town Clerk Association, but I did ask the Town Clerk if she could send out an email so it could be shared everywhere or whatever their distribution. And then I also sent them an email separately, just like a contact link, asking if someone can send it. I have not heard anymore. I think it would be beneficial to get the more applications if possible. But I'm we're taking time. Yeah. I didn't put a deadline just because. Yeah. I just put interim to possibly, you know, permanent, but upon. I also, if we could get it to that um, clerk association, yeah. I think that would be great. I also mentioned it to um, the TAs that I saw today, uh, meaning Hubberson's town administrator, Rutland's, just to, you never know, like anybody who could, but if they thought of anyone or they kind of put it out there. And, and on Ann Gobi's meeting on Thursdays, I could bring it up. Mm -hmm. um, just, uh, and that's kind of where the regional small town um, could be beneficial. <clears throat> the other thought was to possibly reach out to some of the other part-time town clerks, but I want to make sure that the board was okay with that. And the only concern with that too is though, with the primaries coming up in March, that is very time consuming right. and requires a lot. So I don't know how someone could do two towns unless there was a, like an assistant clerk for one town. Yeah. Which we should. So, if you guys are good with me reaching out to maybe some of the surrounding towns, just to. Yeah. Whatever we can do to. Okay. We probably have to make a decision interviews at the next meeting.
Um, I just had uh, I had the HR consultant with Barry and New Braintree in Rutland. So um, did we take any action on looking into that? Discussed. Okay. 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 So maybe for a future, um, put that on the agenda. For I don't know if Maribel can look into the options that um, uh, Butland and Barry and New Braintree are looking at. Oh, for the HR. Yeah. And even um, MMA were part of that. Um, yeah, because they list like HR stuff. Yeah. And see what resources they have available that we could use. from Board of Health. No, I have more than one. Yes. So if you want, I'd be happy to give an update. Yeah. Um, the Board of Health, um, what's it go? Um, and to certified a letter um, to the current owner of 21 Colebrook, um, who had not been responding to phone calls anymore um, or emails. So uh, a certified letter went out and was um, signed for, um, requiring a response within 30 days um, to address the ongoing um, uh, issues surrounding the um, property. And as of now, there's not been any uh, response. But that was um, sent out and all um, neighbors on Maple Street uh, received a, um, uh, a letter with recommendations on how to maintain rodent proof areas. Um, rats look for food. Um, and if there's anything around for them to eat, they will populate. Uh, and apparently they populate quite well, um, like rabbits. And um, uh, however, as the um, cold weather comes in, um, the food supply does go down. Um, so it is believed from our health agent, who is a, uh, has become an expert uh, in rats, um, that um, they will populate less um, during winter months, but um, uh, the property um, just been in like got to be sold, going to be sold, and um, so now um, the property owner has to take action to address um, the outstanding issues. Here, Dr. Omega Construction. That's the place in my That's all business. All business. Mm -hmm. I, I said one more thing on good news. If I, right. uh, I attended a meeting with Rutland Dispatch this morning um, with uh, the community uh, communications director in regards to the assessment for. The town's portion in ours just went up about 7%, and they will be sending out those invoices hopefully soon. And it's about at $65,027.37. They've been waiting just because if they get green app where they can apply it towards it, then they would reduce the assessments for each town. But as of right now, that's where it stands. Um, just about $4,000, $61,082.58. And this year, $65,027.37. How often do they have uh, meetings? They do um, meetings. They're, they're trying to get on a schedule of quarterly. So they just had one with the fire and police chiefs for the five towns that they're 
individual. So police one day, fire another day. Um, they communicated that. Too. Yeah. Um, January 9th, they're doing a combined fire and police for the five towns. Just the chiefs. Um, but yeah, quarterly, he'll just send out an email a little bit in advance. Uh, no board of selectmen. And it is, well, no, it's for the town administrators. And nor am I that, but I just felt like I should just quickly go to bring back any information. It was a quick meeting, up in an hour. Last year, we uh, had 722786 left over because grants came in and they reduced. So it goes up for <clears throat> But I expect that will come down. Yeah, and that's what he's hoping. And that's why he's held off on sending the invoices. They seem to do a really good job looking for grants. Yes. They probably have a grant person. Do they have a grant person in Rutland? Actually, not yet. Okay. Not that's not. another position they have the time for. But Mike has been doing all the grants. I asked about the radios. Portable radios, he says nothing yet, but he continues to try. Um, and he's made some good improvements, or his team has, with the fire department. I know that there was a little bit of a little hiccups that would happen that if they got a call, they wouldn't ring out the fire department. Chief Howell has made it very clear that he wants the department to grow and be more professional and be involved. Um, so they've come found certain solutions or tactics to make sure that they're involved. So everyone seems to be a little bit more on board. Did they talk about a new tower? They did. They, they're doing a new tower in South Barry. They're just waiting for the chief of um, Barry to come back from deployment to get it squared away. But it's going to be at the fire station right on, in South Barry, across from the Actually, Chinese restaurant. The reason they're waiting for the, the guy to come back to deployment is because they're going to put the tower on his property. And he and some of the equipment yeah. will go inside yeah. his station, so yeah. they, they want to make sure that they're actually putting yeah. it in the spot that he wants it because it is his property. Yep, and and some of the equipment will be inside his building too. So they they're like, we're not going to overstep by any means. They're talking um, about having the access for six cell sites to rent that tower. That might help. Like oh, yeah. Yeah, it'll be capable of uh, accepting six cell sites. Yeah, and Hubbardson's is up and running, not at full capacity yet. It, they're, they do it in like steps. So they're about at 25% uh, capacity. But yeah, they're moving in right directions. I mean, I must say that our assessment is a lot better than Hubbardson's because they were not happy. <laughs> They're also repairing the Barry Tower as well, and they start to bring that one back up to full capacity. Uh, there, it's on borrowed equipment. They're waiting for the uh, funding to buy the new equipment and replace it. Mm -hmm. As soon as they do, Hubbardston is online, Barry's online, mm -hmm. and I have seen an improvement in the last two weeks. Uh, actually, quite an improvement. And he said that it's once the Barry, the South Barry one, is up oh, and yeah, running, it, it will seamless. we'll feel it a lot in OPM. We'll have a lot better service. So that is good. Yeah, we feel it on the, the fire in the town. Yeah, huh? yeah, and that's means that that side will get much better reception. Yeah, they're gonna gut it and replace it. They're all coming down. Eventually. <laughs> yeah. So they're gonna replace the, the guts on all the towers because evidently they bought all the equipment from the cheapest bidder. And they didn't use the best stuff they could have used. Like if they had gone with Motorola or Kenwood, we wouldn't be having this conversation. So the equipment is now 13 years old and they're gonna replace the equipment OCAM. Uh, they're already Hubbardson Barry, put up the new power and everything should be seamless after that. We've talked a little bit about the uh, umbrella of coverage too, because they have to project the umbrella, as you know, towards uh, the South Shore. And that kind of leaves Barry on the fringe of our umbrella, which is weird. Like you'd think I get better reception in Millville than I get in Barry. It's for that reason. That frequency is very close to the Boston frequency. That's right. We bleed into Rhode Island too. Um, the one it's other thing he did mention, he did provide the minutes for the police and fire 
meetings. If you guys are interested, I can scan those and send them to you. Yeah. Um, and he did state that on the last contract that each town signed, they granted by town council or their council, and they had to alternate the language on section one, just items one and two. So they, he would require a request for the board to sign a new contract. And he provided me with the old, you can see the difference. Oh, is this, the one that is? this one was signed on November 1st, 2022. And the only items that are changed are one and two. So you guys can take a look at that. You don't have to do that tonight. You can put it on the next meeting if you'd like. And he said it's just to make clearer language and that came from their council. Section one, one and two? Yes. I think that's very basic. It's semantics. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so I would move we accept the amended um, the, uh, regional this way. And the extension to June 30th, 2026. As amended. Yep. Thank you. We did get um, information from the building commissioner on the um, arch. He confirmed um, that uh, it does require it to go through the um, building commissioner process. We did double check with the state of the commission on the degree. I don't know if we need to, is there a contact? What group is responsible? I know I was corrected at the last meeting, but what's the group? The Historical Association. Was they, it? they manage the arch project or was it another group? I know they said the association is different than. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't. But I think it was like this. Okay. So we probably need to share that information with. Well, we can start off with by contacting Mr. Dugan, who's been yes. the lead on that whole project, and then. Yep. So they need the building up like a permit. And I wish there was, I wish they had access to a, uh, someone who could draw up plans for them. The, the association's a private entity. This is a town cemetery. I don't know how you can utilize a private entity to represent the town on town property. I'm just throwing that out there. It's not the association. It's the commission. It's not the commission. Not the association. And those are the three members of the which are MC, Greg Spinney, and Du. And yeah. now Matt Brunel. Brunel. Okay. Oh, Dugan's on it? No, he's on the historical oh, association. Okay. I thought he was also on the cemetery. No. Okay. I think he was brought, he took, did a lot of the work because he knew a lot of the history. I did attend a uh, walk through the association, um, the historical association on Saturday. And I think there were about 20 um, residents that participated going through Coldbrook Springs mm -hmm. uh, that the state so kindly 
I took away um, uh, in 1930. Uh, still sore about it, um, but uh, it was very well done. Um, and uh, it's great work that the um, private entity um, does for uh, the town of Oak Camp. Uh, we're fortunate to keep that history. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 I think it's one of the things. I get, I mean, the gene. And is the handle a handicap accessible handle? I think it's a, a it's knob. A, it's the bar. Here. Oh, it is a bar? Okay. It is a bar. Both of them are bars. Okay. Both of those are bars. I mean, could, could we, um, if we funded this, um, accepted the bid and funded it, could we also, I don't know if the Council on Aging has looked at um, the type of lock um, for the senior center. I know, you know, the church has a, a It would be much keypad. better for us to have a keypad because we have one set of keys. Yeah. Um, so it would be better to have a keypad where other members, because right now I'm the one who comes and covers time at the senior center, so I have the key. If I need a replacement, they either come through upstairs and go down, or they they don't get in. Oh, okay. So for now, just swap the um, the current handle. Yeah. Yeah. And they're probably not the uh, do not replicate keys. No. Right now. Yeah. So I would move that we uh, cover the cost of um, a replacement door from ARPA funds. Yes, and that was allocated initially at an estimate of two thousand dollars. So okay. that came so in. At, uh, accepting that estimate at seventeen hundred of the only bid. Second, all in favor. Aye. Thank you. Is anyone keeping an eye on what the library is doing on you at the park? I want. No, I just saw that today. It was mentioned to me last week they're going to be cutting more of the parking lot to. But they had handicapped parking spot. I, I feel they should be talking to the board of select on something. We own that. We own that property. And they've already gone and done what they've done. They just do what they want to do. I think somebody should be watching that to see what's going on. And when I was told last week that they're cutting more of the parking lot out. To put the handicapped parking spot in. And looking at it in where that handicapped parking spot is, there's a manhole for the septic system. So I, I just think someone needs to step on that. Stop just doing what they want to do. And I'm, I'm going to bring this up again. I think Mr. Taylor was at the meeting when we had quite a while back, if they did what they did, that, that doesn't put, that I'm not going to plow the parking lot. Because now I have no place to push the snow, but in front of the fancy foyer that they put down the bottom of that building. So with all the apparatus, they, I have no place to push the snow. And at that meeting, Lisa Huntington said, fine, we'll take care of the plowing. 
I believe that. I hope that's in the minutes. That's correct. Here again, they're going to cut more of the parking lot. Well, we go into executive session on the chapter 39, section 23B, subsection 3. I never do that. <laughs> 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 Thirtieth, twenty twenty-three. Just the exhibit, executive session, back in open session. Okay. Yeah. Nine thirty-one. Thank you. To approve the contract between Town of Oakham and Highway Superintendent Charles Curry. I would move that we accept the contract for the Highway Superintendent uh, with the Town of Oakham and uh, Kevin Curry. Second. Favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Favor? Aye. 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 Aye.